So uh, here's a, for my uh, presentation overview today. I'm going to introduce who I am, uh, who the company is, what we've done in the past, if you have an idea, a flavor for the kind of background I have. Uh, Shanu touched on uh, several pieces of it. I'm going to talk about uh, engine control um, in modern vehicles, just kind of go over it. A lot of you already know this stuff. I'm not going to break huge ground or anything like that here. Uh, I will let you know, uh, you know, just we'll just cover the base and get all on the mi same mindset. Um, and then we'll talk a little bit about uh, engine calibration. Um, people call it tuning, whatever, um, and, and kind of how we approach it um, as an aftermarket uh, company that's trying to do OE work. Um, we'll, we'll cover that, and we'll spend I don't know, five ten minutes on the on the executive order process, which is uh, the car uh, testing and whatnot, just to give you an idea uh, how involved it is. And you know, and at the end, if there's questions, just you know, feel free to raise your hand. Let me know, or you know, just shout it out, whatever. It's fine. Okay, so uh, back to me. Um, we have. Um, I, I'm a mechanical engineer. I uh, went to school in Milwaukee for basically internal combustion engines. Uh, I, I knew right away when I started school back in 1990 something <laughs> that uh, I wanted to do cars and internal combustion and whatnot. Um, so I got my degree, I focused everything in school about that, and then I went, uh, went right to Detroit from Milwaukee, and I fortunately got a job with Roush, and I worked there for four years on uh, a couple of Ford SVT projects. Um, I learned a lot about the structure, <coughs> OE methodologies, and just generally how to be a, a good engineer that, that, that takes care of uh, hopefully all the loose ends that can, uh, can actually appear. Um, after, after Roush, I, I moved over across town to uh, Robert Bosch Corporation. Uh, Bosch is a world-renowned company. Um, I know everyone here has heard of them. Uh, they've, uh, they do some really specific, uh, terrific work, and it was, uh, my time there was, uh, it was a real learning experience to be part of a, such a professional organization, a uh, worldwide professional organization. So I, that was a huge learning experience. Um, we worked on the Cadillac CTS, v, or CTS with the V6 and the Saturns. Um, that was the first electronic throttle programs. Um, so I spent years with that uh, right when they came out, by like going to Bosch. Um, after that, I, I moved to Lotus for a couple years. Um, my tenure at Lotus was shorter than I wanted it to be, but I couldn't resist coming to California from Detroit. So <laughs> that's why it's a little short. Uh, but there I was, I worked uh, at Lotus and then on-site at General Motors, proving ground in Milford um, on the Cobalt SS supercharged and the Ion Redline supercharged, bringing them all the way through production to uh, start production. Um, and then I also did at least street evaluation, which I put that here because I know there's a lot of the Lotus people. <laughs> so I was, a, I was back, you know, it was 2003, that was in the, in the first Elises out there uh, with the 2ZZ. Um, after that, I came here to California, and I came to Dynan, and I've been at Dynan for uh, five years. Um, so that's kind of my background. I've done ma mainly all the BMWs, whether it's M cars, uh, V8s, V10s, turbo cars, and uh, Dynan's really propelled me to start seeking myself and uh, get off the ground with that. But uh, that followed into uh, when we started seeking, we wanted to do something that was big and impressive to show people that were, you know. Doing, doing something uh, substantial. Uh, so we've made these powertrain packages based on this uh, Lotus GM uh, um, marriage of, this, of these engines, supercharged engine, and we decided what better car to put it in than the Lotus Elise, or Exige. Um, it's a perfect engine. Uh, Lotus Engineering um, was uh, the initial uh, uh, engine designer uh, of this Ecotech and they work with General Motors to make a supercharged engine. So we, we've taken that a step further, uh, three steps further, actually, and uh, went into uh, making uh, versions of this for the Lotus Elise and Exige. Uh, they fit in all the Lotuses. And that's actually what's in the silver car out here. Um, we've got three different versions, 280, 320, and now 370 horsepower this year uh, out of the 2.2 liter. Um, and next up was the the Lotus T4 and T4E controllers. I don't have them out here, but most of your cars have them. <laughs> um, and I worked with Chanu uh, and Eric um, getting getting these tunes out there. Um, we re reverse engineered this uh, the ECUs for all these for all these uh, Lotus cars um, all the years 05 through current uh, for the 111 chassis. 
and um, that's been a, a big feather in our cap to be able to work with a guy like uh, like the company, like with the sector and whatnot. So that's that's uh, that's up there. And then our next project, which we're just getting into now, is the GM LNF motor. If you're not familiar with that, it's a direct injection two-liter turbo motor. Uh, it's a very high-tech motor out of, out of General Motors. It's one of them that kind of got sliced in their uh, recent um, reorganization, uh, in some respects. Uh, we've reverse engineered the controller in that, and now we will be presenting them uh, <coughs> excuse me, to uh, various applications in the future. Uh, again, this is our silver car, um, which is sitting out here. It's uh, that we were blessed enough to have that in a road and track uh, basically almost two years ago now. And um, it's been a good, a good development piece as well as a show car for us. Um, this is one of our customers. If you'll notice, the, uh, we tried to make it as OE-like uh, packaging as possible, the engine, how it fits in there, all the hose routings, the harnesses. Uh, we tried to do it as OE as, as possible. And we've got a few happy customers right now that they really, really enjoy this piece. Um, next up is our programming console. We just made this. This is basically our first, our first own software. It's just a GUI shot of, uh, to give you an idea that we, we've made our own uh, software programming system. We're going to be able to add more and more cars to this as time goes on. Uh, this one right now uh, will have the, the GM LNF uh, controller in it for the turbo direct injection motor. Um, yeah. So uh, the next part is just a quick review because I want to let you know uh, the role of engine control uh, in modern vehicles is pretty complex. Uh, uses a variety of sensors and actuators, which is the next slide. Um, and sensors basically input information from the uh, from the engine VCU, as you probably already know that. Um, and then actuators, sensors are things like temperature sensors and uh, motion detectors and things like that. Actuators uh, control devices to the engine from the ECU. Can we go back one? Sure. So everything red here is a sensor, throttle position, and all that. Um, oxygen sensors, NOx sensors, uh, fuel injectors, uh, and uh, electronic throttle. Um, uh, fuel injectors, electronic throttle, spark plugs, and coils. Those are the actuators. Those are the things that make, make things happen in the engine. Um, we try to be professional. Uh, do our, uh, the best job we can with understanding and, and, and using the system uh, to its fullest. One thing that's not on here is the engine control module, which is basically what our, our forte. So I, uh, my slide is, doesn't have that, but uh, I should have grabbed it to see if anyone else had found that. <laughs> so you can go down. Show um, so what is engine calibration? Um, taking all those sensors and actuators, uh, I've been asked this many times over my tenure and that you know, I never had a better answer than this. It's, has, it is everything to do with the vehicle running. Um, and that in includes the, what we think about when we do that, uh, when, we, when, we're, when the vehicle's running. And that's drivability, power, uh, obviously, which a lot of people are, are uh, interested in these days. Uh, but we, we're also thinking about reliability and how clean the exhaust is. We're not, we're not trying to run around with black smoke coming out of the tailpipe or anything like that. We, we care about that stuff, and we really don't want our name on anything that's sputtering around or shooting black smoke out the back. So engine calibration in general um, is, covers several levels, uh, and, and uh, we're really, really trying to focus on keeping all those levels in balance. Properly tuned car um, is, is really the, the key to that, and more is the software. And it's set up like that because software is easy to change from, from an uh, original equipment uh, perspective. It's easy to change and it's repeatable. Um, and then the type of engine control, I'm only going to touch on this real basic. Uh, if you look at uh, the control systems like in the Lotus these days, probably compared to the new Agora or say to some of the Porsches and things out there, uh, this is a pretty standard, uh, somewhat simple control system. Uh, some of the new ones have you know, wide bands, uh, O2 sensors and whatnot in the exhaust. You can get away with a little more because they will do. They will self-correct, but these uh, these cars won't self-correct. So if you've got hardware that does things like uh, that makes more power, maybe you've got an exhaust system that makes more power, then you really need to get in the computer and change it to assure that you're safe and, and you're getting what you need out of it. Mm -hmm. Okay. 